Does that work? Is that now? How do you know there's no... I guess uh, Zachariah is watching. Oh. Can you check it again? Zachariah, come in, Zachariah. Okay. Come in, do you hear me? Uh, you have YouTube on that phone? I get it on here. Okay. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Oh, there you go. Whoops. Have to watch what we say now. Maybe it's Yeah, maybe you can fix itself. Okay. Maybe it's an automatic fix. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no. so, so let's go. So that, that's the parak. Okay, the parak is uh, it's, it's fun. Um, the first story is pretty solidly understandable, okay, just in the chat level. Um, so is sort of the ending, the apiryo, and the discur- there's like a chuppah going on, and there's, it's a wedding day, and the king Shlomo gets a crown by his mother. We can deal with it. The middle, the middle song, Vav to Techet, was very strange, okay? Who's that coming up from the desert? And, and his bed is covered around there, 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 there's 60, 60 guards around his bed who are strong, and they're all there from the fear, fear of the night, who, what, and how. That. So I think we're actually going to jump right into the, the Malbim first. Okay, we're actually going to go to Rashi second, even though we usually do Rashi first. Since the Malbim, since we're all in the Shvung of the Malbim, right? Yeah, yeah okay, good. Because the Malbim is a lot of fun on this chapter. All right, the Malbim in this chapter, he's going to take everything another step, um, another step further. And... Um, and of course, when we learn the Malbim here, what do we have to do first? This is a new song. What do we have to do? We're learning the Malbim. What do we have to do? It's the first thing the Malbim does with the songs in Shir Shir. It connects it to a prophecy. Oh, it connects it to a historical prophecy. Okay? So, what is our first, what is our next historical prophecy? We all have Tznachim. Uh, you guys can look together. Let's take a look. Ready? Malbim Shia Shirim Paragam. You with me, everybody? Second page in the Malbim on your page here. Beginning of the Malbim. Achare Yamim Rabim. Vearaya Eluhi Taita Skura Bigvia. After many days, and the beloved godly soul is 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 closed up, is stuck in the body. Zachra et Doda Shabashamain. Vatetse mimitata. Okay, remember how does it start off? Al mishkavi balelot. Mishkavi is where I lie down, meaning my bed, which fits into the end of the chapter, which talks about ine mitato sheli shlomo. Right? Okay, so he's going to connect them, obviously. But he says I, I, he's on his bed, and, he, and that's so it's no lamar migviata. The bed is, like in Hebrew, we call it a. Mita, right? A mita has to do with death, right? Mita? No, it doesn't. Why not? Because it's a tet. Thank you. Good. You have to be on me, guys. Sometimes I'll say things that are wrong. No, I'm kidding. But I'm saying in this case, here there is a connection. And he says, this is the body. Okay? The mita is the body. Like a lot of things have been the body throughout in the Malbim's explanations. The city's been the, ba- the, ba- the, the body. The Melech Shlomo is the body. All these things we have. So here's another one. The mita is the body. Okay? So it's been a while. Remember, if you guys remember last time, he didn't manage to really, last time, in the last song, in the previous song, when Shlomo had that half prophecy, he didn't manage to really break out of the body. So now he says it's been a while. And now the soul is yearning. The soul wants to retaste prophecy. Wants to retaste that connection with Hashem on the highest levels. Okay? Vze haya bishnat echad esre la melech shlomo. Sheaz kila binyan beit Hashem. Vihirba betfilot betachunim vizvachim rabim. So what is this here? This is. The end of the 11th year of the king Shlomo's realm. It's been a while now. It's been years since the previous one, which is the fourth year, right? So this was Veshana Chadisra Namel Shlomo, and then he finished building Beit Hashem, Beit Hamikdash, the first Beit Hamikdash. Okay, and he made lots of prayers and zvachim, and he brought a lot of sacrifices, as it says in Malachim Aleph Perek Chet. 
I'm going to go there in a second. Velo matza doda ad she yetsa min ha'ir la'midbar. He couldn't find his beloved until he left the city to the desert. These are all things we've talked about in the past. I hope you guys remember. The city is, this is the body of the city. The desert is the good place. <laughs> the desert, there is no human restrictions. It's the open, direct connection with HaKadosh Baruch. Ritzono lomar ad pashta min until he got rid of the body. That's the midbar, right? Litchaber im HaKodesh. So now he appears again to Shlomo like it was in Givon. Givon was the first prophecy. So he obtains you know, this prophecy in Perek Gimel, where the Malbim is going to say this prophecy is going to go from now till Perek Hey. This is two Prakim. We're only in the first one now. Gimel and Dalet are both are going to be in the same historical event prophecy, but this one's going to be like the previous, like not the previous one, like the one before that, like the one in chapter 1, which was Yishakenum and Yishikot Piu, remember? The actual direct prophecy and all is grander. This one's the longest yet. Hashem talks to him and talks to him and talks to him and talks to him. It's a long Gibur, we'll see in a second, okay? And this one is the most important thing. This is going to be, this is an intro to what we're about to see. Hold on to your hats. This is going to be different than what we saw until now. Even after the, 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 the powers that be of the body broke off the connection, because they have to, because we've seen they have to. Bechol zot davak ruach Hashem benefesh shlomo gam acharei zeh. The Hashem spirit stood with Shlomo HaMelech even after the body reawakened. This is something we have not yet seen. Okay? This is something. How does this happen? He's going to say it quickly here and he's going to develop it in the parak. Al yadei hamikdash asher bana asher Hashem amar lishkon ba'arafe. Oh, this is the mikdash. Now that Shlomo built Beit HaMikdash, there's an opportunity for something that we didn't talk about before. Up until now, we've talked about the dissonance, we've got the contradiction between body and soul, body and soul, body and soul. Right? The whole story was, did he get out? Did he not get out? Did he get out? Did he not get out? Did the soul manage to disconnect and therefore experience Hashem directly without all the functions of the body playing? And then, well, whatever. Remember, we talked about lightning flashes, remember? So at some point, you have to come back. Right? The, the Malbim brought the, the mashal of, of the... Of the of the earth that has to be dormant for a while and it can't grow all the time, it needs to rest, this, the, the winter, the, the rest of the body, the sleep, right? Nahon, remember that? So now he's presenting a new kind of issue. He's saying that there could be divine inspiration or divine um, 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 a prophecy, a level of prophecy that continues. This is thanks to the Mikdash. The Mikdash, somehow, he's going to have to explain how, is a conduit for a new kind of experience. If up until now we divided between the two, the Mikdash is going to change the way we experience Hashem's presence individually and as a nation. He's going to explain the two. Okay? He says, Hashem Amar Lishkon Barafel. It's a great pasuk. That's how it starts the, the Shomo's great prayer. If anyone knows that what I'm talking about in Perak Chet in, in Malachim Aleph, brought us in Divrei Yamim, Shlomo gives this massive prayer. Mama, he falls, he goes down, right? He says he goes down on his knees and holds his hands up to it. It's like well, impressive. And 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 then he and he, burst, he starts off with Hashem Amal Lishkon Barafel. Hashem said to live in a cloud or in mist. That's what Arafel is. Okay. Now Arafel is fog. That's what it would be nowadays. You'll wake up some days in Yerushalayim and you will see Arafel outside. Everything's foggy. So there every night. It's all foggy. <laughs> so Hashem says He will dwell in Arafel. Says the Malbim, this is a, a code that Hashem can live in the mists too. In the murkiness. He can be there also. This is what Beit HaMikdash is going to 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 mechadesh to <laughs> to, to change what we've thought until now to do something new 
to make a new kind of experience. Okay, that, that goes to the Mikdash. All right, and that's one where Hashem can rem, you could remain connected to Hashem even in your bodily functions. All right, who, I don't remember who David. I think the empty chair. You know um, that that uh, we talked about. It's not Judaism, right? There was a, an issue, right? This disconnect from. From physicality, it didn't sit us sit so all great with us, right? Because Judaism is a is a is a unifying force. Usually, they don't try to say no. Yes, no, everything we talk about Hashem Echad, we talk about actually kedusha being everywhere. So now he's going to talk about. It. I, I warned you guys that he not warned you. I told you guys it's going to happen. This is where it's going to start happening. Okay, in Perak Gimel, he's going to start opening a new kind of prototype, a new kind of uh, of, of understanding of how it could work. So I think that was what happened in Matan Torah with Moshe, that he approached the Arafel. Right, very much so. The Arafel is Hashem Elohim. Right, correct. He says, now he's going to say how the soul managed to get free, and the Bnot Yerushalayim, the Kochot of the Chomer, the powers of the body, couldn't stop the Kedusha. And this song goes on until Perakei. Okay? So, before we look at, let's take a look up at the story itself. Everyone, please open up to Melachim. Aleph. Kings 1. Chapter. Chapter 9. Melachim Aleph. No, that's not me. That's Joshua. You I know, no, I think that issue that it's ripped. Yeah. Chapter one. The issue is that you don't, you can't read chapter one of Joshua. Yeah, no. I just turned. I didn't <laughs> no inherent. Know, no, no inherent. Uh, there you are. You're there. Yeah. Exactly where you are. Perfect. Chapter nine. So again. Okay, chapter nine. Um, so. So really, chapter 8 is this great, great prayer. Look how long chapter 8 is. 66 psukim. Okay, one of the biggest psukim in the, in the Tanakh. Okay? And, and, and it's all festive there, and Hashem appears, and they bring korbanot, and Shlomo blesses the people, and Barak Chet. Okay? We're going to start Barak Chet in a second. Okay? So, the last psuk is, uh, uh, the last pasuk of Perak Chet is Bayoma Shmini Shilach et Am Vivarchu et Amelech. On the eighth day, he sends the people away and they and they bless the king. Ve'elchul Olohem Smechim Ve'tovelev. They go back to their tents happy and with a, with uh, with a good hearts. Al Kora Tovah Sher Asad Nai LeDavid Avdor Yisrael Amu for all the great things he did to David his servant and Israel his nation. Now I'm in character. After Shlomo finished making Beit, uh, the, the, his house and and and, and Beit Hamikdash, then Vetkol Cheshek Shlomo Asher Chafetz Lasot and everything he wanted to do. Vayera Adunai El Shlomo Shenit. Hashem reveals himself to Shlomo Shenit the second time. Right? Kasher nirai lav b'givon. Like he did in Givon. Givon was the first prophecy. Hey, but there was one in the middle. So what's the Shenit here? Because the second one, the Zumalbim reads, wasn't a real prophecy. It wasn't the same level. It was something else. We said in the Pshat even there, it seemed like someone came and spoke to Shlomo. Vayomer Adonai elav. Shamati et tfilatcha ve'et chinatcha asher itchananta lefanai. Isn't this an amazing statement? Shem says to Shlomo, I heard your prayer and your beseechment that you beseeched before me. I have sanctified this house that you built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and heart will be there for all days. This is the Beit HaMikdash, okay? Ve'ata. Now listen, you. Im telech lefanai kasher alach David avicha betom levavu yasher lasot kechol asher siviti icha chukai mishbatai tishmo. 
If you're like David, my your father, who walked after me with an innocent heart, or a full heart, or a, a complete heart, and, and being straight. He did everything I commanded. And if you will, you'll keep my commandments. I will establish that your seat as a, a king of Israel forever. Just as I spoke to David, your father, saying no one will, you'll never lose a king from your family. Imshov tashuva, but, all right, but, okay, ready, but, in Pasuk Vav. Imshov tashuvu nachem v'mnechem me'achorai. If you, how do you translate that? Shov tashuvu me'achorai, you, uh, you betray me, in a sense, that's it, is. you go, you go behind me, you go betray me. Ve'lo tishmeru mitzvotai chukotai asher natati lefrechem, and you will not keep my mitzvot and my chukim that I gave you, v'alachtem v'avotem anuim achrim ishtachavit lehem, and you go and you serve other gods and you bow down to them. I am going to kick Israel out and I'm going to destroy Beit HaMikdash. Israel will be a parable and a, uh, a uh, warning to all the nations. There's a very great statement. is a fascinating wording. The house will be elevated. Say Chazal, Beit Hamikdash. Even when it's destructed, it's still there, right above where it should be. So, Kol Alver Alav Yishom V'Yishok. Anyone who goes by will 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 whistle go. That's what they like that kind of whistle. Whoa, what is going on here? V'Amru Al Measad Unai Kacha La Aretz Asot La Beit Asot. Oh my gosh, what did they do that caused Hashem to do such harm to His house? V'Amru Al Asher Azvu Et Adonai Elohim Asher Osi Et Avotam Yerut Misaim. So the answer will be because they left Hashem their God who took them out of Egypt and they going to other gods. Therefore, Hashem brought upon them all this evil. So, first of all, just in lengthwise, this is nine, nine psukim. It's a long prophecy. Okay, Yachasit to the other one, Shlomo received. Or shorter. Um, better the second one, but the first one, even the first one is shorter. And this is much more uh, detailed than he spells them specifically. He says, if you do right, you and your children will rule forever. And if you don't, you'll, you'll lose it, you'll go to Galut, and the Ba'it will be destroyed. So the, that's the prophecy. This is the, the background to what the Mabim is going to be talking about. Um, but, but he's mostly holding on to the fact that Hashem appeared to him just like he did the previous time. Again, two previous times, the prior in Givon, when it was a real prophecy. So we have prophecy take two, better. Yeah, back to the Bible, everybody. Yes, sir. I was going to say it's interesting that the first one is in a dream, right? The first one is in a dream, and this one is less than a dream. Yafe. Yafe. So this is a higher level, Kato. You guys hear what Idan said? Idan said the first appearance of, of Hashem to, uh, is in, in Paragimel Pasuk, hey, he appears to him in a dream at night. Here it doesn't say anything about a dream. Good, good observation. Now, this definitely fits into the Malbim is building this as a, a higher level, a higher level uh, prophecy. This said there. All right, ready? Al mishkavi balelot. As I am on my bed at night, right? So he says, let's just think, it's very clear once you have the Malbim's code of what's happening here. So the Pasuk says, sorry. The Pasuk says, Al mishkavi balelot. Bikash diet nafshi. Right? When Shlomo's still in the body, his soul begins to yearn for though that he loves. In other words, it's a uh, it's sort of a remembrance of what was once was, and the soul starts burning for this. Okay? Says the Malbi, Mal Mishkavi Baleilot. Lo Mishkavi Balayla. This isn't a one-time event. This is a voida. 
day after day, night after night, Shlomo is yearning to reattach himself to Hashem. It is a continuous event. It's not one thing. It doesn't happen after once. It doesn't happen if you really want it one time. This is something he's working on. Right? He says, Haya mechin et atzmo lenevuah. Laila achar laila. He would work on himself, prepare himself for prophecy, night after night. Okay? Achar sheigdim lekadem pana betfilatu bezvachim. Seder? He says, he brought sacrifices, which is one thing. We'll see what the sacrifices do. And he's working night after night. Sacrifices you can only bring in the day. So he would, in the day he would bring sacrifices. At night he would be working on his spiritual side or his moral side or his ethical side. Um, these are the things he would be refining night after night. Um, right? That's what it says. I search for the one, my beloved. I'm searching and I can't find it. All right, so now, what do you do? Okay. Now the Malbim puts it, he says, if you guys are on the, the next page of the Malbim, right before Bet, he says, Not our Chanukah. Chanukah means the, the dedication of the Mikdash. The Malbim points out that this prophecy happens after the whole event. It's a major event. Chanukat Beit HaMikdash and then Divrei Ayami talked about They brought like a billion animals. They sacrificed it and so He says, you couldn't count how many animals were being sacrificed in this, on this day. It was like a massive party, massive party going on here. But then the prophecy appears at the very end. When did this prophecy happen? So the, so, so, so the Malbim says it happened, it took a while, it took two, day, two weeks afterwards. And all this time, Shlomo was expecting prophecy after he makes Beit HaMikdash. And we'll see that Beit HaMikdash, the whole keta of Beit HaMikdash is prophecy. Um, he didn't have it. So this is his search. He searched night after night. Day after day, searching, couldn't find it. So now what's he going to do? Now he's going to get up, right? Remember the pasuk, Akuma Nava Soveva Ba'ir. I'm going to get up and, and, and look around in the city. I'm going to look at the, at the, 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 shvakim, the, the marketplaces. So Rabbi Shvakim Baruch on the streets. And I'm looking for it by beloved. I can't find it. So what is the marketplaces? What is the city? And here the Malbim brings a fascinating um, a mashal parable. And he says in the city, a, every city is like a human being. You are your own city. It's interesting that the, the Kuzar uses the same, the same mashal. Um, he says every city has lots of different people. Every city has lots of different places. And it's a hustle bustle. There are things going on all the time. It says, just like a city has the, the marketplace and has the houses and has the courtyards, a city has different parts, and different people in it. So too, us inside our soul, inside not in our soul, inside our, who we are, more our physical side, have all kinds of different, different aspects. Right, you're right. It's ready for the for the breakdown. He's gonna break it down pretty pretty uh pretty mefurat. Okay. Akuma. Okay. So she looked for him in the shvakim and the rechovot in the in the marketplaces in the streets, and she can't find him. She says, first of all, you should know what is Yushalayim. Whenever it says Yushalayim here, what is the city? The city is. The body, once again. The center, and others are the thirty. Okay? But he says it's it's a more complex mashal. The city is the place where all the the talichim. The, I'm losing my English people. Maybe it's time of night and just as yet. The, 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 the different processes that happen in, 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 in man happen. Things are happening in the, in the city. Things are always moving. So, so we're talking about, we talk about the city as a mashal, as a parable to man. We're talking about like all the different 
things that are going on in him. That uh, I guess the tarichim. I can't say the word tarichim. Man, tough. Whatever. The different processes that are going on through him. Um, let's take a look. You want to ask? What? You want to say something? No. Oh, okay. The seder. Okay. Are you guys with me? I'm in. I'm in bet in the malbim. Okay. So he says, in the second, in the second, uh, the second line, "V'tzoni l'mashikvar be'arnu ki ha'ir Yerushalayim amuskir v'sefer azu mashal kibut kol kochot agvia." It's the parable of the gathering of all the powers of the body. Shehi ha'ir aktana. That's the little city. The body is the little city. There's a city and another city. V'chol anashia ha'inu kol kochotia. Yesh lem derot u'batim yuchadim. It says each part of our body is the dwelling place of a different emotion, thought, lust, biological, biological need. We're made up of lots of things. We're made up of our intellect. We're made up of our, our emotions. We're made up of our necessities, our biological necessities. We're made up of lots and lots of We have imagination. We have the ability to be analytical. We have lots and lots of different elements within us. He says, that's what you have in a city. That's why it's called a city. You're, 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 you're very busy. Your body right now is being very busy. On the one hand, you're focusing on me. On the other hand, you're thinking about your bed. Talk about beds. Thinking about going to sleep. On the other hand, maybe the food wasn't good enough. To, right? So I'm hungry. On the other hand, maybe my stomach is upset and it hurts and, I'm, and it's, it's rumbling and bothering me. On the other hand, maybe my feet aren't, aren't so comfortable right now. At the same time, I'm sort of my, drifting a little because the shear is so like in the clouds that my head's starting to go in the clouds and I'm thinking of all kinds of things and all these things are happening at the same time in your body. The millions of things are happening. I don't even go into the biology of it, what's going on right now. If I go into that, we'd be here for another 10 years, right? Everything that's happening in the, the, your body is a constant motion, constant movement, constant things that are going on, right? He tells us, don't think, don't think. Just look at me, don't think. You can't do it. It's very hard to shut off your thoughts, for Mamash to shut off your thoughts. Things are going on all the time. So there's, that's what he said. It's, a, it's a hustle bustle. Your body is a hustle bustle. Just like if you look at a city, right? What's a city like? It's a hustle bustle all the time. People are going in and out and buying and selling and moving and going and living. And, and even when they're not outside, they're going in their houses and they're sleeping and they're eating and they're talking. and they're, Things are going on all the time. That's the idea of the city. So the body is like this constant movement and to be able to, um, to disconnect from that, and then we're going to see reconnect to that, and then go to, the, to Hashem and bring Hashem back down, it's going to be the challenge that's happening here. All right? So he says, Lemasha, Nimsa Bagvia, in your body there is a Ish You guys with me? I'm in the one, two, three, fourth line from the top. This is a mashal, okay? Nimtza bagvia in the body. There's an ish chacham, an ish mevin, an ish bal dea, ish metzayer, ish choshev, machshavot, ish shomer, ish zocher. You have all these elements in you. You have somewhat. You have memory. You have uh, uh, imagination. You have opinions. You have understanding. You have knowledge. You have. There are lots of things going on. It's like there are different people in your inside you. You have a guy like this, and a guy like this, and a guy like this, and a guy like this. Ritzon um, Omar. So what? Did, uh, um, uh, what does that mean when I say there's the koach of chokhman, koach binan, koach dat, koach metzayer, koach mechashev, koach shomer, koach zocher. All these things are in your ability. The intellect. These are they define the intellect here. Your intellect has many, many different levels. Vechenimza. What else will you find in the city? Ish roe, ish shomer, ish meriach, ish toem tamim, ish memashesh. You have in the city. You have people who see and hear and smell and taste and touch. What is that a mashalav? Obviously, the five senses. So these things are all brain oriented. They 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 affect your your thought process, right? You see something, you think. You hear something, you think. You touch something, and your brain starts uh, computing it and understanding what's happening and dissecting what happened. Okay, and he says also, what else is there? Uh, what else, what other people are in this city? Okay, look at vechenim sabag via vechenim sabag ish mekane ish mitgae ish mitachzer ish gibor ish aspanim ish anav ish bar rachamim ish rachalevav ish baishan. You know, there are lots of people also who are emotive and have emotions. You have the jealous man and the 
haughty man and the 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 cruel man and the hero and the the chutzpah guy and the humble guy and the one full of compassion and the one who is fearful and the one who is baishan who is um, shy. Ritzono, Ritzoni. So, who are these people? We're talking about the midot in the in the in, in the body, which he just goes through pretty much what he just said. The chol ele shorsha minefesh achionit shemishkana balev. The previous one was the man's intellectual faculties. That's up here in your brain. The emotive fact faculties are in your heart. Says the Malbi. What else do we find in a city? We find a man who eats and a man who cuts up the food and a man who takes out the garbage. Okay? And in this way, I'm talking about in the body, you're talking about the digestive and the bodily functions, what I'd call the biological functions. Okay? And so, just as we find in this city all these things, so too... There are places that each of these things gather. Now he's going to divide it. He's going to say that there are, there are, there are, um, gathering areas for these types of people. Okay, he said first of all, he's, about, he talked about, he's dividing lots of different things, talking about, um, 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 intellectual faculties, emotional faculties, and biological faculties of man. That's sort of how he divides us up, okay? He says each one of these, he divides into lots of different ones, right? He talked about lots of different elements in each one. He says, but there are places that they gather. So he says the imagination is the place where he gathers the, the, um, the intellectual faculties. And the emotions, Koacham Amitore, is a place where all these things, where all the, the Gava and Kina and Azut and Anava, all the things he mentioned there, they gather in Koacham Amitore. What you lust for, or sense, or what you need for animalistically, that's all connected to what we call the biological functions. So he sort of gathers them into, into categories Hamedame, the imaginative. The mit orer, what he calls the awakening, the one that awakens, which is the motive, what we call, and the mit ave, which is the, the bodily needs, I'd call it. Okay? It says all these things gather together, and he says, now, one, two, three, four, five lines from the bottom, he says, al pizza yitzayera melitz, now he's going to explain what happens. Kiaraya nefesh lomo. Right, the nefesh, the, the soul, the godly soul. It's going to look for its supernal love, beloved. Okay, so first of all, it starts walking around the cities. It's trying to reach Hashem using these emotive intellectual, biological needs. It's, it's trying to go through them, trying to use it with them. Can I see Hashem using my emotion? Can I see Hashem using my emotions? Can I, can I, can I find Hashem there? That's what he tries to do. Ubechozot lo auto, right? That's what it says. He looks around, the shvakim, the rechovot, velo matzah et sha'ava nafshi. He can't find him. Ki lo yusag bekoa chomri. Because the, 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 the physical, as much even if it's in your mind, which is still physical, you can't get Hashem that way. This is continuing what he said until now, okay? And as long as you're still inside the city, or slash the body, you will not be able to reach the, the level of spirituality that he's talking about, that he wants, the, the high level of prophecy. Even if he left the individual emotions and he's sort of dealing with them on a grand scale, like the imagination, which incorporates all kinds of different things in it, okay? Or emotions, which can incorporate all kinds of different emotions in it. He says, even though you sort of went a little further, you're still limited.
Okay, so if you don't find him there, let's go back to the mashal. She says, I woke up and I'm looking for my beloved. I can't find him. Yeah, of course you can't find him because you're still in the limitations of the city slash body. Which spirit was the Malbim? The 1800s. Hundreds, yeah, like 200 years ago. Less, yeah, well, maybe less, a little less than 200 years ago. That, towards the end of the 1800s. 19th century? 19th century, yeah. But probably, yeah, right, yeah, 19th century. Right? I don't know, like, like, around, like, late, eight, like, 18th, early 19th century. Yeah, you already, you went into the 19th century? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so if you maybe a little bit into there, okay. I said, uh, it's, very, very, it's, it's very close to uh, the way the Ramayim is a lot of Tanya. But. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, first of all, they're talking about they're talking about souls, <laughs> the Jewish souls, and he's built in the Zohar. I remember I told you guys the, the Malbim says you cannot learn this book without the Zohar. That's what he says. You can't learn this. So he every so often he quotes the Zohar, but he, he doesn't he, he not, doesn't use Kabbalistic language. But he's, he's, he's there's a lot of Zohar going on in the background of here. Okay. Yeah, that's what you're right. So it's, he's definitely, and again, he's talking about these, these, right? The the Gospel of Balatanya likes to divide things and give them a shalim. He gives them a parables, right, to what it's like. Anyway, you cannot receive the prophecy on the level we're talking about unless you leave the Chomer. So where is he going to have to go? You have to go to the desert. Right? At the end of the day, he's going to have to go to the desert. It's not, it's not going to work to receive the prophecy. When you're still in the city. All right, so now he goes further and he goes to meet the Shomrim, Hasovivim Ba'ir, right? He's going to meet the guards who are around the city. So he got a little further out, but he's still connected somewhat. Ready? Look at Gibel. Mitzauni. You guys with me? As Berov Chukat and Nefesh Achaydodai, it chila latzet min ha'ir. It starts to leave the city. Ritzonali, it pashet min ha'chomel. He started to manage to disconnect from these, these uh, faculties, these the human faculties that he has. Leave the people. Even the, the general meaning places. So he says, these guards are like, it's funny, it sounds like the guards are not keeping people at, out. Sorry, they're not keeping people from coming in, they're keeping people from going out. That's what the guards are here. Usually guards, right, keep the city safe from people who are coming in. So the way he puts it, the guards are the opposite. They don't want him out. They want to keep him there. Okay? Okay? Okay. So he's right on the point of leaving his body. The, the Shomrim are, the, are that point of, of where the soul manages to break free of the body. But that moment is a dangerous moment because the soul who breaks free of the body dies. <laughs> That's what happens. Okay? In other words, we have to be careful here. And here, I don't know who knows about spiritual experiences, but uh, those who are, are professional spiritual people um, talk about the dangers in meditation, the mashal. Uh, there are places where you could just go, woo, and that's it, and don't come back. Not because uh, you don't want to, uh, not, no, yes, yeah, because you don't want to, not because though um, uh, it, it's not, it, nothing biological happened in a sense, but your, your, your soul experienced something that's so great that you're done. You don't want to go back to the, to the body, all right? So there, there, is a, there is a danger here we're talking about. The shomrim have, have a purpose. It's like, sort of like we learn psychology, right? You have, a, you have things that block you or don't, don't allow you to do things. One of the uh, Aleph bets, one of the ABCs of psychology is, you, is the things that are blocking you or your problems that are blocking you, they have a purpose. They're also protecting you from something that you're afraid of. So in this case, the, the, the faculties here, they're, 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 they're holding on to the soul and not letting the soul go to God. It's not because they're evil necessarily, but because their essence is physicality. The, the, this disconnect of the soul, the to go touch onto something higher, is really 
almost opposite to who they are or what they are. And it makes them disappear. It makes them not, not necessary. Okay, again, and the basics here. What's in the Beit HaMikdash is going to be, it's going to flip that around. The Beit HaMikdash is going to be the key to saying it doesn't have to work that way. The Mabin is going to be very big on Beit HaMikdash as being like the a, ability to connect Shamayim Varetz, connect the sky and the ground, uh, right? It is like, uh, if that's the case, I'm just imagining about uh, Nadav and Aviv. Yeah, they're in this. They're in this game. <laughs> they're here. Yeah. Are they here? Yeah, yeah. They're they're playing around in this same uh, the same world we're talking about here. Okay. According to again, according to the Hasidic, the Kabbalistic understanding of what they did. So there, the pshat is they just went and did so they shouldn't be, which they shouldn't have done. Okay. The the Kabbalistic explanation is that they are on a really high level and they were trying to get somewhere they shouldn't get. Okay. Is it going to be discussed in here? No. But I uh, just have a question about it. Yeah. Like, uh, like Udrav says, like, um, if the Malbim is linking the Beta Mikdash to, to this as a like, prophecy, then why didn't he think about uh, Nadabin Aviu when the Mishkan? Was well, he's not talking about it now. We'll have to see what he says about Nadabin Aviu in, in Shmini when he, when he talks about it there. So, no? Yes, sir. So, without the temple, without the Beta Mikdash, there's no prophecy. No, there is prophecy, but it's really dangerous. <laughs> That's what he would say. He would say prophecy, there is prophecy, but prophecy needs to be a complete disconnect. And since you're human, your body's going to pull you back at some point, And then you're going to be, it's going to be like bereft of what it was. You're going to leave what was. And nothing remains there except the memory. With Beit HaMikdash, you're going to be able to bring that prophetic experience into your, your life. Okay, and re reattach it to the body and the faculties of the body. Okay, that, that's the that's going to be the the, the keta, the, 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 the chidush of Beit Hamikdash. But hold on, we're we're, we're not there yet. We're going to get there soon. Okay, kimat shavra tashomi. Right, so it says kimat shavra timem ad shematzati et shavah nafshi. Okay, so the the pasuk says very soon after I left these shomrim, right? I left the boundaries. I found my beloved. Okay, and then I grab onto him and I won't let him go. Let's take a look. Okay. Says, I didn't leave them the gamri because then your soul would have been gone. Benishika. What's Benishika? There's a, a famous uh, a statement that, that Aaron Cohen died. Mot Nishika, it's called. What's the death of a Nishika? Aaron, right? Rashem, Moshe said to Aaron, lie down, take off your clothes, put your hands on your, on your sides or whatever. Close your eyes, and he died. And it says Moshe Rabbeinu, right? The kiss, nishika, mot nishika, the, da, the, the, the death of a kiss. Okay, so this leaving because you're cleaving to Hashem, that's a nishika. That's a, that's the kind. But it, but it's dangerous. But we don't want to die. It's not what we're trying to do. So he says, the love Rami Sham the Gamre she'az aitan ishmato yotzed benishika. If he would have completely left the Shomrim. We just talked about it. That's gone. Then you're gone. You don't come back. So that, that would be like a mafet nishika. It's a beautiful way to go. But that's not where you, what you, the way you want to go necessarily. The body was annulled. There was no body there. Then they found. Now I said, it's not like, it's like, the shoelace was touching the, the, the body. The, the very end of the, of the soul was still connected in a tiny, tiny, tiny way to the body. But that's when they experienced Hashem. Okay? This is pr pretty much what, what we understand of prophecy until now. Prophecy has to remove itself. Obviously, if you remove yourself too much, you're going to disappear or, or die or cleave to Hashem and, 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 and leave this world. So, so the Malbim can't say it has to be uh, disconnected 100%. But it is 99.9% disconnect. From the body, okay, and then you could receive the prophecy. So All right. Prophecy is like when prophets are prophesizing, they are unconscious. Yes, according to uh, for sure, that's what it says. The Rambam says, yeah, your body falls apart. We're going to see it later. He's going to talk about it later, how that happens. For sure. The Ram says, all evarav mit parkim. His <laughs> it's a funny word. His uh, his his limbs co collapse or or fall down, or mitparek is uh, disintegrate almost. 
Okay, in a sense, that's what happens. Yeah, your body, you have to, you have to, your body has to be not an, a factor. Right, sorry. Uh, I'm on the third line from the bottom. It says, I grabbed onto my beloved. What does that mean? It means the holy soul, the, the beloved, Hashem's presence, agreed to connect. That's achastiv. That's the grab. I grabbed him, and he agreed to be grabbed. This is a prophecy as we won it. Ki lo teref edoda ad el beitima. Ready? He says, I've grabbed my beloved and I'm not going to let him go until I bring him to the house of my mother, the place of my, of my birth. Oh, this is a new one. Okay? This one's saying, I'm not letting him go and I'm drawing him back to... To my, to, to my life, I would say. I like to my body, but yeah, in a sense, to my, I'm not willing, not like, it's not like the previous times where the, there was a connect and then, and then the body pulled them down. Remember, you guys remember the, the theory that the body pulled back the, the soul, the, 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 the raya, the, the, the human part of the soul, and the godly one flew out of there. He says, this time, he's holding on. He said, nah, uh you're coming back with me. You're going to return to my life, into my faculties, into my... This is a new attainment, this is a new level of prophecy. This is a prophecy that says, up until now, it's changing what we have until now. By the way, it's Mamash changing what we had until now. Until now, it seemed like the first two chapters, the first one was a good one, the second one was the, was the lower one, and, and what we're, we're looking for is this disconnect. That's what we're looking for. Now he's suddenly saying, uh-uh. Now he's not willing to, to let go. Okay? I'm holding him, not letting go. That's exactly, that's what it says. Until I bring him back home. All right? Is uh, prophecy going back to the, to the like, human consciousness? To everything. Human consciousness, human imagination. Human, yes, you're going to live in a state of prophecy in this world. With your faculties. How does that work? Well, see what it means. Okay, what it means. But because up until now we kept on saying it's not that. You know what I'm it's almost. It's almost. It was almost a, a an impossibility. In other words, the, the minute you start talking about the body, you're done with the with the with the, the prophecy as we were talking about. It. Now we're suddenly going to have some kind of incorporation of of this into the into into life. Um, I look on the second to la, the second to last line. This time it's not going to be like the previous times. That until these times, the previous times, the the higher soul, the the, the we say the godly soul, went back up to Shemaim. Because before the mikdash wasn't built. This is the difference between, right? remember the Mabu we talking about historically. The first two prophecies were before the Mikdash. This prophecy is after the Mikdash. Shlomo has a new arsenal, per se, to use in his prophetic pursuit. Now we have the Mikdash. Now everything is different. So there? Aval achar shenivna Mikdash, hechel Hashem nishkon kavod betoch b'nei Yisrael. After the Mikdash was built, then Hashem's glory dwells within Am Yisrael. Okay. Kemoshen Emar, Bano, like Shlomo said, I will, but I'm quoting the second line on the next page. Bano, Baniti, Beit Zvulach, Machon, Eshiftech HaOlamim, I built you a house. I don't know what Beit Zvul means. Zvul is one of the, 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 the layers of Shemaim. Machon, Eshiftech HaOlamim, a place for you to sit. Forever. What does it mean that Hashem is going to sit? The Shiftecha. What does that mean that He's going to sit? What does that mean? Uh, 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 this is Hashem's throne room. What it means is that Hashem will be present here in this world. Mikdash Hashem. Through again the, 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 the Mikdash. Through the Mikdash. Hashem. Davak Ruach Kodsho Alabonimoto. His. Spirit 
clove to those who built the Mikdash. Sheze ikar hakavana bebinyan hamikdash. Rabotai, says the Malvim, if you guys thought that the idea of the Mikdash was to have a place to serve Hashem, you don't understand what the Mikdash was for. The Mikdash was a conduit for prophecy. That's what the Mikdash was. The Mikdash was a, a transmitter, sort of. I don't know what to call it. A, a uh, transformer, almost. Like you put something in, right? There's, there's electricity that comes in, and that actually is too high. It, can't, it will blow out anything you put in. But you use a transformer, right? And then you could plug in your plug, and it, and it takes that energy from the other side, and it works. You know what I'm talking about, right? You use like a, the wrong kind of voltage in a different country. Different countries use different voltage. So, so if it, the voltage is too high and you put your, your plug in, you'll explode. But the, what the Mikdash does is it, it takes that energy and it makes it usable. It makes it usable in, your, in, in, in our lives. That's what the Mikdash was supposed to be. It's, it's a fascinating question. When we ask, what are we doing? What are we waiting for when we want the Mikdash? What do we expect to happen when there'll be Beit HaMikdash? What's going to happen? We're all going to go and eat a lot of meat. What's going to happen in the Beit HaMikdash? Why do we want it? Why are we waiting for it? Says the Malbi, what do you mean why are we waiting for it? It is the key. <laughs> That's what he says. It is the key to, to actual Jewish living. There is a spiritual living that you do without a Mikdash. And that is a very high level, but it doesn't work in this world. You have to disconnect. There is the world without prophecy. We don't want that either. That's a world of, 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 of human uh, limitations. We want the chibur. We want the connection. It only can happen when there's a mikdash. And he's going to say the whole Beit Mikdash, the way it's built, the way it's, the, what you do in it, everything is to... to to symbolize and to actualize this idea, this concept of connections. Okay? But that, that's the rest of the chapter. Okay? And he's going to go on from now on to explain how these things work. All right? And he says, Vasuli Mikdash Veshachanti Betocham. That word is always interesting, right? What should it say? Asuli Mikdash Veshachanti Betocho, it should say. Right? The Pasuk says in, 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 in Shmot, when it says to make me a Mikdash, Make me a mikdash and I will dwell where? In it, right? Make me a mishan, that's where I'll dwell in. Make me a tabernacle, that's where I'll dwell. But it doesn't say that. It says, Vasuli mikdash veshachanti betocham. Inside them, inside Amisa. It says that's pshat of what the whole thing was about. That's the whole idea of the mikdash. But achen amar sheata lo teref mimenu. Ad shetivyo el beit ima. Shehu aguf. I want to bring you, when, when he says, I'm going to bring you to the house of my mother, it's the body again. It's a, it's a relation. I'm going to bring you in. So he says, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, it's, it's a, a parallel, a parallel, a balance. Not, it's not a balance, a parallel. I'm going to bring you into my body through the fact that I'm going to bring you into Beit Kodesh I'm going to bring you. You're going to come. <laughs> Hashem is going to come into Beit Kodesh Kodeshim, And at the same time he comes in there, he can come into me too. That was what would happen in the Mikdash. Rabotai, it's, it's an important understanding. <laughs> when people ask, what do you think is going to happen when there's Beit Mikdash? Why do we want Beit Mikdash? What's the keta of Beit Mikdash? So Beit HaMikdash is multifaceted. There's lots of different things happening. There's, there's, there's Sanhedrin there. There's uh, there are Korbanot going on there. There's the, the Seder Yom Yom lighting candles and the bread and the Ktoret and the Aron, which we're not sure at Bichlal what it's doing there. And there's the speech that comes down through the Kruvim. How did Hashem speak to Moshe Rabbeinu? Through the Kruvim, right in between the Kruvim. That's what it says. That, says the Malbim, is really the essence of the Mikdash. That's the, the most important part. The speech, the nevuah, that comes through Beit HaMikdash. That's what we're searching for. Okay? Now he says, 
the the the, the pasuke is uh, is again once again the 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 powers of the body start awakening at this point. But he goes, get out of here. <laughs> Go away. Right now, I am experiencing Hashem. I don't want you interfering. The mom doesn't even spend two, uh, one line on it. He so says, just like I explained before, Shlomo is requesting them, stay away. But this kind of works. Okay, he says, stay away. This time it works. All right. Now... The next two, the next two psukim are, he's going to say, are, are a question, sort of, that the body asks. How did you get away? Okay? How did you get to the desert? I have guards around you. The, remember there are guards around the bed? That was the, the weird one. Remember the weird psukim? There are 60 guards around the bed. The Malbi is going to explain this as a, a structure of, of the guarding of, uh, again, or the, the blocking. The body tries to block the soul from flying out there. Again, we said there's a reason for it, but we say we don't want it. We want to be able to leave it and then draw Hashem to us. Instead there. But, but the next two are sort of really asking, how did you do that? How did you get there? How'd you, what did you do? How did you, how did you manage to break out? Okay? Mizotolah mina bar. How did you come up from the desert? Is that there? Let's take a look at the, at the Malbi. Okay, we have some time. Mizot, sho'elu mitpaleh. They ask and they're, they're amazed. Ech yachla ha-nefesh nitpareid ba-gviya. Ve'ech barcha. How did it run away? How did it get out? Be'leel chazon mimitat shlomo. From the body. How did it get out of there? Is that there? And, um... Take it. Okay, so how did it happen? Kitimrot Ashan. It's an answer. Mizot Olamina Midbar. How did you get to the desert? I was you are keeping you in the city. How did you get to the desert? Kitimrot Ashan. Kitimrot Ashan is a, 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 a billowing smoke. So there, billowing smoke. Says the Malbim. Billowing smoke is what happens when fire, when fire uh, meets something, and it and it causes smoke. Okay, it burns something up. Says um, the love of God. Said there the ahava. That's what happens. The love ish is like ahava. That's what allowed this. Ayedeha ish ohid v'shelat ahavat Hashem sheba'ar beliba. I'll just translate it. The, the, by the godly fire and the flame of the love of Hashem that burned in his heart the, the spiritual nefesh, the spiritual soul managed to disconnect from the afar, from the dirt or from the... the, 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 the um, Materialism, the material, the part, the, the, the body, in the sense again. And it went up like smoke. And that, that uh, meets the burning, the eating fire. What's the eshochla? Who's eshochla? The Torah says, Ki Hashem eshochlahu. He is a devouring flame. Says the, the Malbim, fire meets fire. That's what happened. When they ask, how do you get out? What's the key to getting out? A burning love of God. That's the key to breaking out of, of the body. That's what we're searching for. The, this, this burning love. It's the first key that we see here very, very soon of, 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 of how to do this. It's, 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 the, it's the way out. Okay? Um, oh, okay. So, this great love, 
says it burns up mikol of katrochel, right? He took with him all the different uh, spices of the, right? He said, of katrochel, the spices of the spice merchant. He took them up. He says, the, this love, this burning love, it's, it's, it's important for him, this burn, like fire burns everything. He says, it manages, with the love of Hashem, it manages to purify the body. The bodily functions, the bodily, all the things we talked about before, imagination, emotion, biology, the love of God manages to 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 purify that, or to like burn it in fire. You know how sometimes when there are kelim, there are certain vessels that the only way to purify them is to. Everyone been ever ever of Pesach? Anyone ever see how things get? What right? libun? It's called right libun, right? When there there are certain ways, some things you just need to dip them in water. Some things you just need to clean. Some things you need to put them in boiling water. It's called hagala, right? And some things you need to take a fire and go and burn them. It says the, the, what it allows it to do. And then what's the difference? When you blowtorch something, you don't even have to clean it before. It's an interesting statement. For it to do hagala, when you put it in, in, in boiling water, you need to clean it before it goes in because the water doesn't uh, go into the places that aren't clean. But when you take a fire and you just go, you roast it sort of, it could come in impure because the fire has the power to purify even the blemishes that are still there. This is what the Malbim sort of hinting, that this love of Hashem has the ability to really, really change the Midot and allow them to be purified for the next level when then Hashem could possibly dwell within us, okay? Again, you're going to see the Mikdash is going to be the basics for this to really happen well, but this is the key. This is where it's starting for, the love of Hashem. But now he goes on, okay, and he still, he still says, how could you break out? There's 60 guards standing around the thing. How can you break out? So here he, he goes into a whole cheshbon. Uh, uh, um, he has a whole calculation here of the 60. The 60 he calls them, but they're the, the bodily parts. They're the evarim, the limbs of the body, okay? How he gets to it... Mm-hmm. It's a lot of, uh, it's interesting, okay? I didn't understand it. Adaso, if he talks about there, there, there's 65 here and 65 there. There's the ear and the inner ear and the, and the eyes and that, all kind. Of, he really, he, he talks about lots of things. Um, not critical for our purposes at the moment, okay? To go into exactly how he gets to 60 and why 60 is the number, okay? Um, so I'm just going to give you guys on, on, the, on this page, the, the fourth line from the bottom. It keeps the nefesh, the, 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 the godly soul inside of us, so that you don't leave the bed. That's what they're around there for. They keep you there. Here's a nice drasha. It says, they are the giborim of Israel. Giborim of Israel, why? It, it sounds a positive thing. In this case, it's not a positive thing. Why? Because Gibore Israel, he says, who is Israel? What did Israel able to do? What, did he, what does Israel mean? You, right? Sarita im El. You beat God, right? Or you uh, overcome God. Sar El, right? That's what it says. Ki Sarita im Elohim v'anashim v'tuchal. When Yaakov fights against the angel. When he gets the name Israel, he's, he says he vanquished Hashem in a sense, or El, or if he managed to beat the angel in this case. So he says it's the same thing. They're Giborei Israel because they could overcome the godly soul inside of us. That's why they're Giborei Israel. They have the power, they could technically overcome the soul. They beat the godly soul. They don't want it to leave them. That's what usually happens, okay? And again, they're, they're, they're astounded. That's the statement here. They're astounded. How did you get out? We have these whole guard system around you. How did you get out? Now, you said the love was there, but we're still astounded that you managed to break free of all these people. Is that there? How do you get back? How do you... What pulls, well, he said, remember he said there's always a, a touch. And if you don't have that touch, you're gone. What's that touch? There's something still connected to the body. You don't leave the gamra. How do you keep that there? He doesn't say it. He said it didn't leave the gamra. That's what, the way he said it before. 
the, that's the, why sometimes you need a guide to do this stuff. Okay, this stuff to try practice on yourself. Um, again, you have to be on a very high level to be in this situation to really disconnect from your body. But um, you should have someone who knows what he's talking about to be able to lead you in these paths because otherwise it's been met playing right. So it's the Nishika, right? Remember, that's your on the Gvul of Nishika. So um, let's just finish this one part because he's going to break this Pasuk in the middle. Pasuk Chet is going to break right in the middle. And he's gonna, the first part of the Pasuk deals with what he was talking about before. Okay, and the second part is already the answer. This, the, the first part is still the question. He says, they're all holding swords. Okay, they're all warriors. They're men of warriors. They all have swords. How did you get away? They managed to win, beat the win. How did they do it? He says, there are two ways to do it. He says, on the one hand, this is the natural world that the body keeps the soul, just naturally. That's how it is. That's how we're made. The body keeps you, and you're supposed to be body and soul. It's, it, it should be elementary that it can't, that your soul can't get out. That's one. The other words, Bitsad the Hergelim, through Hergel is. Uh, Things that we do again and again. How do you, the, the, this has got to be a word for hergel. Help me out, guys. Hergel comes from a thing doing again. That, you're, when, when you do something again and again, and that your your customs. You get, so there, you get used to it. You're, the things that you do again and again. So that's another way the body holds the soul down. What? Yeah, like habits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Habits. Your habits. They're like yeah, right breathing, right? No, but more like eating in certain ways or thinking in certain ways or using your imagination in, in ways that are bodily function, like most human beings do. So these are the two ways the body holds you down. First of all, just naturally, they have a power over you because that's sort of the way you were created. And the other is, They always try. They try. They, they, they doubt, your body douses you in materialism so that you stay there. It does it. That's its job, per se. And it does that again and again and again. And so the question goes again, how did you really manage to get out of here? Even though you said at first that you had the love and it burned down, and said, no, 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 come on. I'm really guarding you. How did you manage to do this? Okay. So what is the way to do it? Oh, we'll see next week. We're stopping right in the middle of the Pasuk, okay? Uh, okay but the way the Malbim reads it is that the second half of the Pasuk is the answer already. Okay? And then that answer will lead us into one, one move, and then, then the Beit HaMikdash will come into play. Shkoyach